two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Hello, and welcome back to What's on Tap podcast. I am your host, Martin. And I am Stefan. He is also here. Yes. And today we are... <laughs> As well. <laughs> He's still here. Um, today we're bringing you American Sours. And Stefan almost spilled... Uh, okay, I almost spilled my beer. <laughs> and we'll get to it, but it is a beer you don't want to spill. No, it's um, not. For uh, mysterious reasons that you will learn later. But I thought we would start... You will, you will all learn why we're starting with my beer. Yes. Uh, I believe that Stefan's beer will be a real palate uh, tickler. Hopefully, if uh, if the well, I mean, the beers are in the show title, so people will know what they are in advance. No, they will have already forgotten. Yes, that. probably. Uh, I think we should start with my beer. Yes. It is Crooked Staves Persica. Well, we, to be to be one thing, we do have two fruit beers. Yes, and two very fruit forward beers. Yes, two so American sours. Very excited about that with fruit. That's true. So it's Wild Wild Brett Persica. It's a sour golden ale aged in oak with peaches, and this bottle is uh, marked October 2015. Ooh. Uh, it was available at glossbanken.se a while ago. I remember. I've, many, many, many moons ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, it was sold as just like uh, Persica oak aged, and then it just happened to be uh, the aged one. Oh, nice. Uh, I have had Persica before, previous wow. vintages, a long time ago, and I l- know that I loved it back then. But back then, the pr- the first version, Crooked Stay, was quite difficult to get. You needed to yeah. Get there was a there was a yeah when they first started being imported, it was quite difficult, very special to get a Crooked yeah. Stay. Man, how things have changed in the last three to five years! Yeah. Like wow. all of these things that used to be impossible to get are now so commonplace. We just take them for granted. Definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a sour golden ale. It's mm-hmm. an oak with peaches. And the nose is so... It's like fresh peach juice. It's super peachy. It is very peachy. It's very, very sweet oh, in the it's aroma. It's probably the most peachy beer that I've had. Because a lot of times, uh, peaches and apricots will get confused. Because apricots have a real forward aroma. Whereas yeah. peach usually doesn't have that much of a super forward uh, aroma but this is this is peaches it actually is peaches smells, on peaches on it, peaches it smells really good it smells so good let's jump into this cheers mm, that's um, really light I would say oh no he's effort, going to say effervescent, effervescent. effervescent. <laughs> it is that's a bingo um, the acidity the initial acidity is very high yeah. There's a spike of acidity, mm-hmm. and then it goes into this dry mouth puckering, general mm-hmm. tartness, and there's there's a lot of peach fruit flavor, mm-hmm. and not as much as in the aroma because the aroma is so sweet. Yeah, the aroma is super sweet. The beer itself is kind of thin. Um, the, the Carbonation's there, but I wish it was a little stronger. Yeah. Um, I think it would elevate the, the beer quite and make it feel more sparkling. Um, because the carbonation isn't quite as strong, I think that the it comes off a little flat in the end. Uh, but the um, aftertaste is just this mm, yummy peach uh, peach flavor. I agree. Um, it's, it, it's at 6% ABV. Mm-hmm. So it's on the lower side for many of these weird, wild uh, ales. Yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed Kirkus Dave in the past, and uh, this is definitely a, a really enjoyable beer. So remind me, is Cantillon Fufun, is that an apricot beer or a peach beer? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's apricots. But I ask because when we talk about peaches or apricots or whatever, mm-hmm. that's a beer that often comes up in discussions with mm-hmm. our, our various beer friends. It's become kind of this comparative staple. 
of the because it's just a beautiful expression of the of the fruit. It's a it's a really really great beer. Um, much like their uh, Rosé Dangambritas is probably one of my favorite uh, raspberry how long mm. beers. I think it's just a really great um, uh, overall beer. I need to try Rosé Dangambritas again because the last time I had it, I wasn't that big of a fan. Yeah, well, I've got um, a bottle bottle. Nice. I almost brought a bottle of 2020 Rosé Dangambritas for this recording. Oh. instead of this peach beer and uh, I feel like I did a good choice I, I, yeah I, 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 honestly I don't think you could have gone wrong either way I do I do think you're right that it, at, near the end of of this beer's flavor it gets a little watery a little mm-hmm. flat uh, but I think that the aroma and the initial flavor it doesn't go bad it just no. disappears a little but but there's there's some uh, there's some flavors that that still linger mm-hmm. no i think the up front is peaches the initial mouthful is peaches the the mouthful itself is kind of weak and thin and a little watery but then the aftertaste is just warm peaches it's it's so so nice now that it's getting some air i'm getting more peach skins mm-hmm. from the aroma like when you bite into a peach, mm-hmm. all all you get in the aroma is the skin of the peach in front of your nose. Yeah, no, this is this is really really good. Um, so what what would you give this? I think I'm going to raise it to four twenty five. Um, I think so too. I think if the carbonation was a little better, then it would, it would be, be a, it would be a four point five. Yeah. But I think right now, just as a as it is, it's a great fourteen by year. Yeah, but but the low the low carbonation and the aftertaste, and these this slightly watery feeling, started me on a four. Uh, the flavors have convinced me to increase it uh, by twenty five. All right. So next up, we have something from Energy City Brewing out of uh, Itasca, Illinois. Um, it is an American sour ale with mango habanero and sabro hops, and it says the fruit was added after fermentation, which um, means which which is when we poured it, we were like, "Oof, that's a fruit smoothie right there." Yeah, <laughs> this is this is thick. This is a very very thick thick beer. So spilling this on your clothes, you won't get that stain out. No, no, no. This is this would be a mess. And oh. Stefan knows everything about weird stains. Yes, I do. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, there's different different agents you need to remove different types of stains. Oof. Um, so one of the things I've started doing with these um, uh, kind of super fruit smoothie beers or even like um, uh, very adjunct laden stouts or uh, double IPAs, like New England IPAs, things like that, where there's a lot of sediment in the bottom, is I store them upside down. And when you do that, um, because it says gently roll the can a lot of times, yeah, that doesn't work. But it doesn't really work. But if you if you store if you store them upside down, all of that sediment flavoring mixture redistributes through back through the beer into the top of the can. And maybe at, maybe this sits for a week, maybe it sits for a couple of days, a couple of hours, or whatever. But then when you tilt it back upright and then pour it. All of those flavor components then redistribute back down through the beer. So then it becomes much more like what it is you're trying, the brewer was trying to achieve. I think so. I discovered this strictly by accident. And I got to say, it has really made me appreciate a lot of beers a lot more uh, from that aspect. Because you're getting all of that stuff mixed back into the beer like you're, like you're trying to get. Because, you know, we've seen bottles of Fento Morgana on the shelf. Where there's a clear line yeah. where the, all of the the <clears throat> the hops or mixture stuff is separated in between the the top layer and the bottom layer, you're just kind of like that's not ah, that doesn't, that doesn't. And then if you have to agitate it to get it to remix, you can't do that once you've opened it. So right, uh, you you really need to be careful to do it correctly before you open it. And with yeah. a can, you don't know if you've done it correctly. And you, you don't know if you even need to sometimes. No, you, you could yeah. roll you could roll it for half an hour. You go, I have no idea when we're supposed to open this. All right. Well, let's take a smell of the heat wave here because I, I 
it's a lot of mango. It's like I, t- I took a, s- a sneak smell. Super, super mango on the nose. There's a lot of mango and there's no habanero on the nose. Yeah, because you would think you'd get a little fruity, peppery kind of smell. Yeah. But the the it just it looks and smells like mango juice. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. That is mm-hmm. mango, mango, mango. Seven point five ABV. So um, much mango. I'm still getting zero habanero. The habanero is slight. There's a little bit of a heat tickle in the back of my throat. I think that's just the tickling of the fuzzy mango. Uh, no, no, this proteins. is definitely a little bit of a a slight heat tingle. But it's it's super subtle. Um, it's too subtle. Well, there is a residual building heat. Yeah, maybe, maybe when we reach slight, the end of this slight. class, I will be super uh, super pumped about this. To be fair, to be fair, you are like a heat slut. You love super hot, spicy stuff. This is true. This is not a super hot, spicy beer. There is a slight residual heat from the habanero the habanero itself isn't presented in the beer like this just tastes like i'm drinking a fruit a mango smoothie yes it's really delicious i mean it's super super delicious um especially if you like mango if you like mango this you should just avoid this beer at all cost um but i think if you aren't heat tolerant this beer might be kind of spicy for you i think it's pleasantly warm like there is a a slight coating of heat in my mouth but it's not just wrecking my palate like uh like the ballast point uh i think it was called woohoo uh which was just like a thai chili pepper beer that oh, was yeah. basically just hot sauce they also had uh, <laughs> uh habanero sculpin yeah which was super spicy but so you're right i do love chilies and i do love extremely spicy chilies but i can enjoy uh chili flavors with a very faint mm-hmm. chili burn but then i enjoy the flavor right i can enjoy the flavor of a, a very non-spicy chili concoction yeah and i think that's the problem here is mango 100 percent spot on yes a plus plus habanero habanero has its own distinct flavor mm-hmm. it is a flavor component it's not just heat there is a certain flavor value with habanero and maybe they needed to um neutralize the habaneros a little bit like cut out the the seeds and the skins because they're maybe they were afraid of or the seeds and the ribbing and maybe they were afraid that it would be too spicy if they had too much um so i feel that's what's lacking here is that the habanero flavor. flavor yeah i'm not i'm not complaining about a lack of heat i'm complaining about lack of flavor yeah from the habaneros right. there's an enormous amount of mango flavor right and the the heat for the habanero actually feels more like a cayenne pepper kind of heat than a habanero kind of heat mm-hmm. i completely agree um but, but it's, it's it's a really good mango smoothie beer. yeah yeah but having said all that i'm gonna give this a pretty good rating i'm just, it's gonna be pretty high <laughs> i think for I've not been a huge fan of these fruit smoothie beers. I know a lot of people love the Martellus beers, just rave about them. I've been more, there have been more misses than hits for me. Yeah. Um, I think uh, The Answer does a really good uh, fruit smoothie kind of style beers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which are just impossible to hear. That's one of those hype breweries that I really wish you get more of in, in, in Sweden but it's just almost impossible they don't export even inside the US um, but this I think really nails the deliciousness of a fruit smoothie beer um, I'm going to give it a 4 to 5 I'm going to give it a 4 but it could be a strong 4 mm-hmm. I'm going on your um, criteria of uh, give what you advertise yeah and I'm not getting my, my uh, habanero flavor i'm getting the spices of habanero but it, it fades pretty quick I mean, every time i drink it it kind of renews itself but within a couple of minutes it's almost completely faded which means that there's very very 
Little habanero in this, yeah. probably. Um, so the, the name of the beer is a mango and habanero heat wave turbine. And there is a turbine on the can. Yeah. Which, which has a flame in the center. <laughs> so they're also advertising heat, chili flame mm-hmm. heat. And we're not just getting it. We're just no. not getting it. Um, but you're getting just... Like I'm eating a mango. On yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's what raises it mm-hmm. uh, to a strong four. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's what's given at that 0.25. Yeah. Um, all right. So you can find us online at what's on tap podcast.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. Spotify, anywhere else. Basically, wherever you can find good quality podcasts. That's pretty much where we uh, try to be. Yep, that's our that's our wheelhouse. Good yeah. quality podcast. None of that garbage trash podcast that your parents used to listen to. No. Boo, boo. Yep. So until next time. Keep drinking your dum-dums. Mm-hmm.